Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about Match EQ. Now Logic has a stock Match EQ plugin. Although if you're not a Logic user, then don't worry. There are lots of alternative plugins that you can get that do the same thing. For example, FabFilter and Isotope both make a Match EQ plugin. And the great thing is, is that they basically work in the same way, although they are laid out slightly differently. So if you want to learn a bit more about Match EQ and why it can be useful, then make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kissed me in the rain. Since I started producing music seriously, I haven't heard or seen much about Match EQ spoken about within the community. And I think that that's a real shame. I think this plugin is incredibly useful. And in all honesty, I genuinely believe that if I had known about this plugin earlier on and known how to use it, then my earlier mixes would have been much, much better. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Match EQ plugin in Logic. And we're going to go over some reasons why you might want to use it. Let's start by having a look at how to use the Match EQ. I'm going to be using Logic Stock EQ, but as I said, the principles of using a Match EQ is the same across lots of different makes. They may just look slightly different. I'm going to stick with the basics today because there is a lot that you can do with this plugin. However, I think that we should look over the fundamental uses of the plugin and why it may be useful to us. When you open up the plugin, it looks like this. You want to load it up on the stereo output and then you solo the tracks you want to analyse. You can immediately see that there are three sections along the bottom, current, reference and EQ curve. You'll also see that there are two buttons saying learn and one saying match. This tells the plugin what to do. So the track that we want to edit or the track that we want to analyse uses the current section. Make sure the track is soloed and then press learn and play the track like so. And I'm like, hey, I miss you. Do you think that maybe you miss me too? And I'm like, hey, make sure that you play all the material that you want analysed. You can see how the plugin formed a frequency graph based off our track. You then just need to click the learn button again to turn off the learn mode and that information is locked in. Then we need something to compare our track to. This is when we use the reference section for our reference track. You do the exact same, make sure that you have the reference track soloed or the rest of the tracks muted. Then when it's playing, press the learn button and you will see the frequencies appear as they did in the current section. Now the plugin has learnt both the tracks, we can move on to the EQ curve section. If you press the match button, you will see some yellow EQ shapes appear. The last thing to do is to simply drag the match EQ plugin onto the track that you want to be EQ'd. And that's all there is to it. So that's how to use the Match EQ plugin, and one reason that we may find it useful. It can help us compare our mixes to other finished mixes, so that we know where our music stands in comparison. Now let's have a look at some other reasons you may want to use the Match EQ. As producers and engineers, we will all come across a track at some point that sounds really bad. It's a really bad recording. And whether this is due to poor mic quality or a bad environment or a poor choice of mic placement, it doesn't matter. It can ruin an otherwise perfect sounding mix. And that's really frustrating. And most of the time, we'll sit at our computer for hours and hours trying to make tweaks in the EQ to compress the track a little bit, add any effects. Basically, anything we can do to compensate for the bad recording. And most of the time, this is just a waste of time, unfortunately. And that's when Match EQ saves the day. Say you have a poorly recorded vocal. You can use the Match EQ to compare that poor vocal sound to a vocal sound that you really like. And you can see where the differences in the two recordings lie. And then you can edit the poor vocal recording based on the results that the Match EQ has given you. Here's a vocal that's been recorded in an environment that isn't particularly ideal with a microphone that's fairly coloured. And I'm like, hey, I 
miss you Do you think that maybe you miss me too And I'm like, hey To me, it sounds quite odd in the mid-range and very tinny So let's try and fix it using the match EQ And I'm like, hey And what a difference. It's made the vocal sound a lot fuller and a lot rounder within seconds. This is perhaps my favourite use of the match EQ. We can use it to create space in our mixes and carve out frequency pockets for competing instruments. So let's say you had a vocal and a synth in the same frequency range and they weren't complementing each other. They were competing with each other. Normally, I'd decide that the vocal was probably the more important aspect and so either side compress my synth or cut a large frequency band out of it. But if we use the match EQ, we have another option. So we have a synth and vocal fighting. I want to change the synth track and prioritise the vocals in this case. Firstly, I click learn on the current section and play the synth track. Then for the reference section, I use the vocal track. Now that I have all my information, I'm going to go to the EQ curve and click learn. We can see that the synth is now EQ'd to match the vocal. That's not what we want. In fact, we want the exact opposite. So we go to the slider on the right that says apply. If we pull the slider down to minus 100%, you can see that we essentially get the inverse of the EQ shape on the synth. This means that our synth is now going to compete a lot less with the vocals because these frequencies have been taken out. So let's listen to the two instruments with and without the match EQ. And I'm like, hey, I miss you. Do you think that maybe you miss me too? And I'm like, hey, and I'm like, hey, I miss you. Do you think that maybe you miss me too? And I'm like, hey. And I'm like, hey, I miss you. Do you think that maybe you miss me too? And I'm like, hey. And I'm like, hey. You can hear that the second example did have to sacrifice the sound quality of the synth a little bit. However, it made the vocals sound much clearer and the two instruments weren't competing anymore. So that's how I like to use the Match EQ plugin. I really think this is a fantastic plugin and is something that perhaps is slept on a bit. But I think that it's a fantastic learning resource as well. We can use it to see why our mixes aren't comparing to professional ones, why our vocals aren't sounding quite like the vocals we want them to. It's a really, really great plugin, and please, if you haven't already, go and try it out. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell, and I will see you again soon.